Yeah, here we go. Here we go. This is Jose Trujillo, world's greatest living artist. World's greatest living artist. World's greatest living artist. If I had a, a um, what do you call them? Uh, effects. This is what it what it would sound like. Like eighties, cool eighties stuff. So guys, I just wanted to make a quick chat. No, it's not a quick chat. It actually, actually, I'm gonna be talking about something very important. Uh, so I moved my chats from Facebook because people on Facebook, uh, they're cool, but they're not chat cool. <laughs> mm. So I moved my chats over to Instagram. Okay. So now these chats are going to be available on Instagram. This chats include, these are art talks. Okay, guys. I just, I just call them chats because, because I'm cool like that. They're art talks. On Mondays, it's going to be from Monday through Friday, okay? So let me read to you really quick what I'm going to be chatting about and what I'm going to be doing, what I'm going to be sharing for to you uh, for you guys every day of the week. Uh, so here we go, okay? The first one is uh, on Monday. Uh, it's Monday, M Mindset Mondays. Mindset. Mindset Mondays. That's what we're going to do on Mondays, okay, guys? On Tuesday... Uh, well, hold on. Let me let me explain to you a little bit of what mindset Mondays are. Mindset is everything that has to do with having your 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 mental your coco your mental attitude right when uh, creating artwork when going into the studio and whatnot. Okay. On Tuesdays, I'm going to talk to you guys about art marketing. That's today, art marketing Tuesdays. Okay. On Wednesdays, uh, it's everything about. Uh, Techniques in the studio. I'm going to be painting something for you guys. I'm going to be showing you guys different techniques that I use. Uh, for example, uh, oil on canvas, acrylic, uh, how to thin out the oil, how to thin out acrylic. And, well, yeah, I guess you can thin out acrylic uh, with water. But there's different ways. <laughs> on Thursdays, I'm going to be doing Thursday Cafecito. My wife, Lisa, and I, we're, we're going to be doing Thursday Cafecito. So we're going to get together and talk to you guys about what it takes to work in a partnership. When you're with your, with your spouse, your significant other, and you're, you're, you're trying to build something. Whether, you know, whether you're, you're, you're an artist uh, in the traditional sense or you are a, a uh, I don't know, a portrait photographer or, you know, any type, any type of art, whatever you're doing. What, is, what does it take to work? together you know to work with your partner because there's there's uh there's challenges in that there's a lot of challenges in working on your own so don't get yourself it's not there's a lot of people that say i just don't want my partner to be involved uh if you're trying to grow this is this has been my experience you're gonna need help and you're gonna need people and and uh, uh it's not a movie it's not like it's not like you know if you do it by yourself you're gonna stay in a certain level only which is what i'm looking into right now and getting getting help into the studio so that's uh, that's gonna be on Thursdays, okay? On Fridays, uh, it's Recap Friday, so we're gonna be talking about everything to do with what I've learned that week. Uh, you know, the downfalls and the things that you know that left me up and whatever, all the things that I've been learning throughout the week. I'm gonna do a little recap and I'm gonna tell you guys. Look, this is what I, this is how I see progress, and this is where I fell, and this is you know sort of a just a little a little sharing of what's happening throughout my week and then uh somewhere in there i don't know that's from monday through friday somewhere in there i'm gonna i'm gonna put uh ask the artist a segment for ask the artist and that's going to be where you guys can get to ask me questions you know i don't know uh you guys have seen my videos you guys have seen what i talk about the kind of things that i that i'm that i'm willing to share and and i'm gonna be uh, talking about that so so you guys are able to ask me you know Hey, by the way, how do you do this? How do you do that? Or where do you buy this? Where do you buy that? That kind of thing, you know. You guys are more than welcome to ask me those things. I'm willing to share, uh, you know, just about everything that I do. Because I think that there's room for all of us. It's uh, it's really what, you know, the way it's the way it goes. How's it going, Esteban? <laughs> um, let me see here. Smith Art Studio says, I just suggested your YouTube videos to someone on Facebook earlier. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Getting famous, getting YouTube famous. <laughs> so guys, today's Art Marketing Tuesday. 
And again, I'm going to do a little recap. This uh, video used to be available on, on, I used to do the Facebook Live, but I found that my audience on Facebook uh, likes, you know, more of the sharing the artwork type of deal. Sharing the the, 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 the the photographs and whatnot. So I was like, oh, why are they doing live videos that is like hip and hot and, you know, well, Instagram. So I moved them here because you guys participate more and whatnot. So we're going to be doing here now Mondays, Mindsight Mondays, Tuesdays, Art Marketing Tuesdays, Wednesdays is Studio Techniques, okay? Everything about how I create artwork. I'm going to be sharing that with you. Thursdays is Thursdays Cafecito with my wife. She's going to be joining us right now. She's uh she's putting some makeup on, I think. I don't know. You know, you know, girls, they, they, they need to look pretty. And uh and Fridays is recap Fridays. Everything I've learned throughout the week, I'm gonna be sharing with you guys that. And then somewhere in there, I don't know what day of the week, I'm gonna be uh doing an ask the artist segment, okay? Sort of uh I mean they're popular right now, everyone's doing it. I think Gary B is the one who started it. Ask Gary B. Well, ask this guy. Who knows about art and stuff? <laughs> so today's Tuesday. It's going to be art marketing. And I'm going to talk to you guys about something really cool. Uh, they say no one. Uh, Smith's Art Studio says they say no one shares their tips on getting their work out. I told them you're not. <laughs> with the info. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going from a fossil in fossil Texas? Awesome. Yeah, I, I share everything, guys. I think that if you're not willing to share, uh we're not Coca-Cola. You know, it's not like it's not like I have a, a secret formula that no one can know about. It's it's hustle. It's hustle. It's hustle along with some leverage boards in there, you know, little things that you use to leverage yourself. But really it's just showing up every day and doing everything you can to 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 push and pull. You push your product, okay? And then you pull an audience. It's 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 that thing happening simultaneously. So today we're going to be talking about art marketing. And I'm going to be talking about... My wife is ready to join us. Yes, she is. Where is she at? Ooh, oh, no. Yeah, the crowd goes wild. Let's say... Yay! All right? We're going to be talking about... Why why you need as an artist Oh I like that. Yeah, so much better. Yeah, as an artist, why you need to go against the status quo. Okay? I think I think that this applies to just not artists, everyone. But you know, this is an art thing, so we're gonna be talking about that here. Mm -hmm. Why you need to go against the status quo? Why you need to go against the gray, the grain, the gray, <laughs> the grain as an artist. Because I think there's a lot of misinformation out there that tells you, you know, in order to be an artist, I'm sorry about that. I just feel like this is wobbly. Is it just me? Or am I making it more wobbly? I sure am, huh? Um, there we go. Yeah. So Sorry, guys. Yeah. I'm sorry about that, guys. But, you know, I need to make my face look more symmetrical. <laughs> so why do you need to be against the status quo? What do you think that is, honey? You lead it. All right. I'll follow. All right. I like that. Mm. I want to see wh where you're taking us. Look, for the longest time, we've been playing. We've been playing with this set of rules as artists. Uh, you should only work with certain type of you know media if you're going to be the artist of this. Uh, you should only if you're a portrait artist, you're strictly a portrait artist. If you're an abstract artist, you're strictly an artist, uh, abstract artist. If you do the gallery thing, don't go to, don't go online, don't do that. You're going to, your name is going to. What do they say that that something's going to go bad with your, your, your presence? You're going to tarnish your your image if you go online. Mm -hmm. uh, and be careful where where you show your work. You must be very careful. This is the, the kind of the kind of bullshit I used to hear all the time. Be very careful where you show your work. Well, they're all stoppers. They're stoppers. Really, That's what they are. Truly. And, but 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 they're the status quo. You know, right. the, this is the way things are supposed to be. Uh, the thing the things that that are supposed to be uh, working. Right. Right. Yeah. Like what's one of you're you're into fashion. My wife's into fashion. She's always been into fashion. We we had a boutique. And what were some of the stoppers that you encountered in the fashion industry? Because everybody has them. Well, 
I mean, I was more retail, so I feel like because. Well, yeah, in retail, but but I'm, I'm sure you guys had stoppers. I'm trying to think. For example, you put me in, on the spot. I wasn't prepared. For example, in product. You know, like they say, they say if you're going to, you know, offer this type of product, you can only offer this type of product. Yeah, well, it, yeah, I guess in the store, like if you're like working at like, right, I understand. What you're saying is like you can only sell specific like type for a specific person. Right. 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 Like this is the skinny girl store or this is the plus size girl store or this right. is the, this is the athlete store. And like we behave like big boxes is what I'm trying to say. But not not in that sense. Not in the sense of the of the. Of I feel the like big boxes have something that they understand something that most people don't, which is offer a lot to everyone. Right, but I I mean product wise, I I I I say like 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 the the the, the marketing, you know, uh, like the vision. Like we want to get a vision right from the get go when we're starting. You know what I mean? Branding. Yeah, branding. Like you want to be branded. You want to be branded first. Right, because it because it's more about perception. Exactly, is what you're talking about. exactly. So, for example, right. when I was starting so, out, they were telling us they were telling me when right. I was starting out. Perception is key right. to how you're going to be seen, received, and purchased. Exactly. But the reality is, is that the people that keep talking to you about perception actually don't buy from you. That's the thing. But, but and so you're listening to these people who don't buy from you and are not invested totally. in your success. Totally, totally. And what I mean by what I mean by branding is the artists first they go, "Oh, how can I get my style?" you know? And I just I just I, I did an interview and 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 we we're talking about that. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'll I'll share with you guys uh the 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 what is it? it's not a blog, what is it? Uh podcast where I did the interview. I'm going to share mm -hmm. that with you guys. But uh when it comes out. But I I see that I see that topic always, you know, like, like you have to have a set style or, you know, there's, there's all these things that you have to follow. How's it going? Uh, money PDOs, right? Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Hi. And, and, you know, you have to have this, this thing only happening. And what this does to an artist is that it, it seals you into a into a box and it tells you, look, you can't even go get a gallery show unless your style is defined. Right. Right? Right. In that sense, I feel like we behave we try to behave like big boxes. We're like, oh, I'm going to be the the athletic. I'm going to be the blah blah blah. Because athletics don't just sell athletic, they sell everything athletic. You'll find from weight, like little weights on the inkles. To like, well, you know, yeah, I think, it's an, it, and it's not a big box. It would be in like a boutique, like a niche boutique, is what you're talking about, right? But something that is like known, like for example, a champ, but branded, champion, like, yeah, right. something that is branded, right? And I feel like we try to go after that first, right? As opposed to you want to be what what I believe that you that well, you know, you know, to, to each their own. But what I believe when you're starting out is you want to press as many buttons as possible. You want to be able to test. And well, and I think that you. that's where, like, um, oh, okay. Mark says that's it? how you get your style. Yeah. Totally. In terms of, that's how you get your style in terms of just creating enough work that people see it. Yeah, when you're just shooting. I feel like when you're just shooting, when you're just, when you're just creating artwork and creating artwork and creating artwork, mm -hmm. and you don't really mind what the style is, the style starts coming up by itself. You know, I think that that's where the fashion world is a little bit different because because each season it has to be it me. has to be different, and that was the one thing coming from a retail space where things rotate really quickly that was really foreign to me right. was that this that it had to look the same uniformed all the time, right? Like this defined style all the time because as artists you would think that you would be the opposite in that you'd be constantly trying to reinvent and create new and different things as opposed to being so defined by color palette tool that you use type of medium you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? yeah 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 or avenue in which you sell your work or right. you show your work we're very vertical right and and this is a problem that i that i that i've i've encountered over and over it wasn't until recently that i started learning from different mentors one specifically that he started he started talking about how in the beginning 
yes, you want to be vertical because everybody wants to niche out and you want to be known for something, right? But in the beginning, what you want to do is you want to also use the horizontal, the horizontal, uh, 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 you want to go wide, he calls it, going horizontal, which means that, that you may, you may not do, uh, you may do abstracts, but still go talk to someone just because. Go talk to someone who's doing, who has a gallery with uh, Western wildlife or whatever. Because this is one of the reasons, because you don't know who that person knows or the group of people that are around. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like we're, we're so, we, we, we cherry pick really quick. This is one of the things that, this goes against the grain. This goes against the right. status quo where, where people tell you, this is what I used to hear all the time. From, from art professionals. You got to go look at the gallery. Study the gallery. Like 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 they're still playing by by ideas of actors. Like in the 1960s or something. You know. Mm -hmm. You got you to gotta look at the gallery. You got to. And then you have to do this and that. And you have to be able to create a relationship with them. And a, a gallery doesn't want a friend. The gallery needs product. The gallery is a store. Like right. Now if you create a relationship with them. That's awesome. Plus mm -hmm. right. But but most people are like, how can they become my friend? And we have a relationship. And, and you know, I've had friends with galleries, with gallery owners, that they never invited me to show just because right. the work didn't fit there. Right. You know, it just didn't fit. It wasn't the thing that, you know. But right. then they told me, look, but go here. I have a friend who, who may have something for you. Right. But then, <laughs> but you know, like, like the whole friendship thing, that's, it, it goes against, it goes against the status quo. What you need to do, I believe, when you're starting out is just go and show up and say, hi, here I am. My name is blah, blah, blah. And, you know, like start doing things differently is what I'm trying to say. Right. Because we're, 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 we're so used to following these rules from artists. Well, if the rules aren't working for you, break them. Right. Yeah, and it's not just about your art style. See, when, when when we hear this as artists, we're like, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to paint different. I'm going to do something so unique that it's going to blow everyone's mind, you know? Right. And we think it's the work. Now, don't get me wrong. It might be the work, too. But that's not what I'm... That's not really... That's not really the elephant in the room. Right. It's the process in which you... You... Uh, the, the tactics you use to reach the market mm -hmm. and to put your artwork out there. Yeah. And yourself. Right. Like if, if if something's been done over and over and you see, for example, when I started out, one of the things that everybody said, mm -hmm. including gallery owners, especially gallery, or, gallery owners, and I'm going to explain to you really quick why most of you may already know. I used to send out artist packages and my wife used to help me. Remember, remember those days? <laughs> we, we were dating and she's like, she's like, I want to be with an artist. I was like, oh, yeah, well, come and help me. <laughs> Come to my studio. Many, Help many me. late nights. <laughs> creating Organizing artists. packets. Yeah, creating and artist packets. Mm. And mailing them out. With all the info and the slides. I used to send out the slides. Yeah. When the slides was a thing. Then we moved on to CDs and whatnot. But uh, but I remember talking to talking and hearing from other artists also. Wrong information. You know, a lot of people say don't focus on the wrong information. In the beginning, you do so you can well, identify. Well, you actually, it. you actually paid a marketing company to create the. Oh yeah, big mistake. To create mistake the too. materials that you were enclosing in your artist yeah. packet. All we were doing was then putting it together and mailing it out. Yeah, yeah. At, you invested a lot. At in, some point, in I invested that. a few thousand dollars on that, and that mm -hmm. was a, 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 you know, big mistakes that you start learning. You know, you start realizing. That it comes down to comes down to you. <laughs> Don't give this job to someone else. Not yet. Mm -hmm. Maybe not in the beginning. Don't give it to some. That's the that's another theory. Uh, not not a theory, but another mis misconception uh, of in the art world. You know, find the find the the art agent and the or the art buyer or whatever. It's it, anyways. We'll move on to that. But he's doodling, and I'm being distracted by the doodles. Sorry, guys. If you yeah. keep seeing me looking down because yeah, I'm watching his <laughs> So, as I was telling you, this whole thing about the artist, the, the breaking the status quo, is where, where did I left off when, when before you said I was doodling? You were just talking about how in the beginning you shouldn't be investing in art, in art market, like paying a marketing company or getting those agents and stuff like that. Yeah. You're just getting started. Yeah, because it's up to you. But this is what galleries used to tell me, you know. Uh, oh, yeah, send send us. Oh, you, you're interested in our work, in our gallery? 
oh, that's nice. They still do this. You guys may still fall prey to this to this uh, uh, stupidity. Send us your info and your your bio and your you know curriculum vitae and all your packet, your whole info. Now you can do it in PDF, so it doesn't take postage, it doesn't cost anything. but it takes time. Yeah, it still takes time. It's the time. The time is a valuable thing here. So you know, time is your asset. So. So they do that, right? And one of the reasons they do that is because they don't have the heart or don't have the time to say, no, you're not for us. Right. So you send them. Imagine how, how, how expensive it was to be sending stuff out, like packages to well, hundreds of galleries. What, if, what about for someone who maybe wants to go into the gallery? What, what do you think are some effective ways for them to knocking on doors? Knocking on doors. You got to go knock on the door. There is no better way for anything to, to get your, your message out than to go toe-to-toe, face-to-face, and practice some persuasion, or how does that, is that how you say it? Pers- pers- persuasive com- com- uh, communication. Right. To have and, a pitch ready. To have a pitch ready. And I'm not talking about being uh, deceptive or anything like that. I'm talking about about... Knowing what your value is, recognizing your value, and communicating your value. Right. Because because most of us think that our value is our art, and it is. We all know that. We recognize it. Mm-hmm. Mom, mom and dad knows that. Granny knows that. And auntie knows that. You know that. But the market doesn't know that. And the market, especially the buyer, the, the, the galleries, mm-hmm. they don't necessarily see your artwork as necessarily as the main source of value. They see your drive. As they're looking at what's sellable anyway. They're looking at what's sellable, right. but they're looking at your drive. Is this person, if I ask you for a commission, are you are you able to to create a commission? If I ask you, you know, if a client or one of their, their, their collectors uh, asks you, hey, can you do that, you know, behind closed doors? And the gallery needs to trust that you're not going to do that, you know, that, that everything is going to go through the gallery mm-hmm. and things like that. They, 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 they're betting on you. They're not betting on your artwork. Mm-hmm. But, you know, of course they're betting on your artwork, but, but first they're betting on, on your you. ability. On your ability right. and, and on, your, on your work ethic. Work ethic. So that was uh, one of the things, you know, sending out the art package and whatnot. So what do you do if you're not going to do that? If you, if you still, if you're going to go on, uh, for the galleries and whatnot after mm-hmm. the galleries... The best thing to do is to go and knock on some doors. If they're far away, practice some phone calls. But you got to be ready with some value. This is one of the things that, I, that I've been uh, talking about lately on some of my videos. Is when you're going to present yourself with a gallery owner. Mm-hmm. For example, when people used to go to your boutique, to right. your clothing boutique. And they're like, they're like, oh, I want you to sell this for me. You know? Right. Whose problem it was now? My problem if I purchased it. It became your problem, right? right? Let's say you weren't purchasing it. Let's say that you, for some reason, you work like the galleries and you don't purchase it. Oh, from the, consignment? From, you consigned. Right. So it's still your problem, even though even though you didn't pay for it. It's sitting on my wall. It's sitting on your wall. It's taking right. up space. Right. And you have to move it out, right? Right. You have to rotate it. So out. the the person pitching at you has to sell you something, has to tell you, look, I'm going to help you push it. Right. You know, they have to, they have to do something. They have to give you some value. See, see, this is, this is, again, this is against the status quo or, or, or again, this goes against the grain. The product is not always, not necessarily always the value proposition. You know, as an artist, what you can do when you talk to a gallery owner, it's not just say, oh, this is going to sell and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. How about I help you organize something, you know, I'll bring some musicians, friends or whatever. And we do a little something if it's local, and you know a couple of you know musicians, clean cut musicians. Like don't <laughs> don't take your buddy Jeremy with a guitar there. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? And, and, and you help organize a little something that because because to them value to a gallery value is is generating foot traffic. You you touch on something extremely important. I did. Yes. Ooh, hit it. Go. So when we had our boutique. Uh, what I recognized, what happened with, because m- the boutique we had carried small independent designers. Mm-hmm. That was the route I went. Mm-hmm. 
And really all they cared about was selling to you. And they made you buy up front. Mm -hmm. And they were done. And I think I've seen this with artists too, that really they just want to make the sale and not follow up or follow through. Yeah. So, so I think that you're talking about something deeply important. Had I been smarter when I was working with the small designers, I would well, have been like, know. you know, are you going to promote my boutique on your website? Right. Are you going to... Because really, it becomes in a one-sided relationship. Exactly. That and is I the think, problem. And I think that you're talking about mutual benefit. It's value. Along with sale. Value exchange. Because you do want to sell the product, right? right. Both, both ends want to sell the product. Right. But you're talking about helping yourself while helping them at the same time. Exactly. And, and those are wonderful so they want lessons to, help to you. learn to, to drive traffic. Right. right. You're talking about driving traffic right. to physical locations. Right. And I think that that's deeply important is, is learning. If you can learn how to work with the gallery right. by hosting events, right. to showing your artwork, exactly. driving traffic, then when you if you ever needed to do it by yourself, you would already have the tools to do it. Yeah. Or the gallery is going to love you. The gallery and they're going to want to do it again. They're like, dude, where have you been? Because last time last time I did a show with you. You told your 3,000 Facebook buddies and you and they, told your 20,000 Instagram users. And they showed up. You know, and, and and I had a full house. Yeah. Now, not everybody bought artwork and this and that. But a lot of people became, signed up to their to their mailing list. A lot of people mm -hmm. bought a little print. Mm -hmm. Someone bought a, a, an art piece, a substantial, you know, uh, mm -hmm. priced a, a art piece. And someone may, that came to see you didn't buy something, you know, from you, but bought something from another artist in the gallery. And for as much as people don't want to think that that's something that they have to do, right? everyone actually does it. It's a must. We see it all day. We see it all day on Instagram when people are showing products mm -hmm. or wearing different things and tagging companies in them. Right. We see it. We are constantly being marketed to every day. Right. And people forget that they have to do it for themselves. Right. And so I think you're touching on something really, really important because we forget how instinctual it is and how necessary it is. It's a to collaboration. To be pushing and collaborating your work. If you guys yeah. have any questions, please, uh, or comments. Maybe not questions, maybe comments. Maybe you guys think I'm wrong. Please let me know or, or, or she's wrong. It's all right. You I'm know, it's okay. Wrong. I'm, I'm only yeah, right. I'm just she's, kidding. No, yeah. I'm if you're kidding. married, she's never wrong. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> but if you're if if these are things that work for me, guys. These are things that have worked for us. This is not necessarily the ultimate truth. I just I just know what's worked for me and what hasn't. I don't know. I haven't tried everything under the sun, but I know that. For example, here's another and thing. And also, too, I don't need to cut you off. Don't leave it all into if you're going the gallery route. Don't leave it all in their hands. A lot of times they're just focused on, they're not focused on selling your art. They're yeah. focused on foot traffic and maybe they sell other art pieces. So if your couple pieces are there, it's just, well, I got it might be lost on in my the walls. Shuffle. It gets lost in the shuffle. Like talk to them before you put your artwork. If we, if I help you do an event and my artwork is there, what do you have to create to capture sales in that moment? Because right. when people want to buy, they want to buy right then and there. Yeah. So do they have a square? Do they have sellers walking the floor selling the artwork that are going to take process payments? Um, how is it that they are going to they are going to make the sale? Because ultimately, oh, that cake guys. If you're not making the sales, you, you can't, can't buy more canvas and more paint. You can't play the game anymore. You can't play the create game. Create more work and to create more revenue at a higher what level. What is the best strategy you have? found that produces the best sales such as on eBay price points bidding style exposure keywords etc well, that's a great question and it's a it's a it's a big question it's it, it can be it can be complicated because there's so many things happening there's so many sellers who have found different variations of how to and push and push their and so many variations eBay. play in there for yeah. example right now I'm doing this right mm -hmm. I, I don't know one thing this is this is has always been the question. People ask, "What's the what's the magic bullet? What's the no, it's not. What's the silver bullet?" From here, I'm me doing this. I'm not getting paid doing this, right? Of course, that right. But maybe someone sees and they're like, "Oh, let me go click." Oh, I got one more person to go to my store. Right. You know, out of I don't know, thirty people, fifty people that watch this. Right. You are driving traffic. It's not. 
I think people look at eBay, and this is, I think, where they get discouraged. Mm -hmm. They look at eBay like there's some sort of strategy right. and keywords and uh, some sort of magic thing that you type in A that's going to drive people in. One thing. And there is not one thing. Like, right. you're constantly telling people about your eBay store right. and how to find you and where to find you. And, <laughs> I have um, little, little bands talking and about it. So there isn't one thing right. that's going to, I mean, for I know example, a thousand I can share with you. For example, on eBay, <laughs> you forget that how many paintings come out a day on eBay? 40,000? No, more than that. Yeah. But in, yeah. I think in certain categories, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. 40,000 yeah. paintings will be shown that day. So you're talking about... You're going to be lost. You're not necessarily lost, but I think people are like, what's the scheme? Right. right, that I can type in the special things I can type in to be seen, and there isn't anything. It's just literally showing up and showing up consistently, yeah. and and making sure that you have enough product. I, I, ultimately, I always tell people eBay is a marketplace, and you want to have the fullest shop in the market, right? And are the most full. And it will come down to your artwork. It will come down to your artwork in the sense that people have to connect with you. It will come down to price because eBay, of course, is price sensitive. Price, price sensitive, always. right? It, it will come down to it will come customer down customer service. Customer service, mm -hmm. you know, it will come down to to how loud you can scream mm -hmm. without bothering people. Yeah. So that's a that's a that's a little. It's a. I, I know it sounds like counterintuitive, but can you scream loud and not bother and people be like, oh, there, there's that person again. Yeah. Oh yeah, but you know, they, they're they're drumming, they're drumming, but but. Uh, how, do, how would you say it? it's like a musician? You know, if you go see if you go see a, a musician, what is it? She wrote exposure. Totally, it's exposure. But but you have to you have to learn how to play the game. There's so many little things happening. Mm -hmm. You know, in any in any marketplace and any platform, whether it's eBay, Etsy. I don't I don't do Etsy. I I, I posted some stuff, but I haven't invested. We myself haven't in figured it. out Etsy yet. I, well, I we'll be honest about we it. Haven't we haven't given it time. There eBay, we've we've done it for so long yeah. that, and there are some things that because I come from a retail background, yeah. um, that are intuitive to me that make total sense right. in eBay. And he's just like, I don't get it. Like that, I would have right. never thought it that way. And I'm right. like, it's a huge retail market. This is how we need to go forward. Or right. he'll, or he figures out other elements. Like he's really great at marketing, at creating, at creating brand image, like brand. Uh, not brand image, but like brand uh, awareness. awareness. There right. you go. Thank you. I couldn't think of the word. Um, and so he's really good at doing those things. But uh, and then and then from my end, it's creating connection and relationship to your clients because you're doing it in such a rapid way, right. and you want you want to make sure that the one experience brings them back. So um, recognition happens over time. Recognition yeah. is one of those things that where consistency plays such a huge role right. because you just it takes up time for recognition. And recognition doesn't doesn't do it alone. Uh, you have to, for for recognition. And it doesn't guarantee it. It doesn't yeah. guarantee it. We, yeah, right. we've, I've had so many people. What does guarantee it is for you to have a way to constantly contact them over and over. For example, if you have a oh yeah. yeah. Brand recognition. There you go. But if you have a, a here's another thing you guys can use. But as we well. all, but brand recognition doesn't guarantee anything. We all know the name Jordash, and Jordash doesn't sell anywhere anymore. Oh, this is what what I was trying to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think I think I think I think people get stuck on brand recognition, but the reality is is that you have to keep yourself viable and sellable. Yeah, so it's like it's like Mark Cuban says, sales cures all, guys. Yeah. Uh, I love doing all kinds of things like marketing. Like I'm trying to like figure out Instagram. Yeah, that's your favorite. You know, I'm trying to figure out. I I haven't seen Jordash anywhere. I'm I'm, I'm trying to <laughs> in do in a long time. I'm trying to do Instagram. I'm trying to do YouTube. I do. I, I have over 900 videos on YouTube. I I'm trying to do different stuff. Guys, give me some hearts if you guys are liking any of the any of the the, the stuff we're sharing here. Thank you. Uh, I've done. Uh, Facebook, I think we have what, like 7,000 right now, 7,000 fans on the Facebook fan page. Uh, we have a, a big, uh, uh, um, uh, list, you know, a contact list with our, with our past collectors and whatnot. All of it works. All of it is great. People we don't open relationships with clients. People don't open emails as they used to. <laughs> we've done, we've done gallery shows this past year. We've done gallery shows. Um, we try to do it all. Yeah. We try to do it all. The thing is that that uh, oh, cool. 
She used to work for Jordash. Oh, I was just thinking awesome. about like a brand that we all know from the eighties. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I don't think they do. I could be wrong. I'm sorry. I just <laughs> I I haven't seen them. Yeah. I was just thinking of like what's the main thing we see, we remember. Yeah. So, so we try to do everything right. There's all these things happening. Uh, the emails this one. Email list is not that effective these days. Uh, they, 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 it was a question mark. They are, they are, absolutely. But you have to, you have to keep other, other avenues also. They are not as effective as they used to be. Like people, like Gary Vaynerchuk talks about this. You know, people used to used to send an email. Remember when people sent you an email and you're like, oh, I got, I got, we even had that movie. You know, you got mail. Like we, we try to look at it. Now we think that everything's spam. Right. So DMs, you know, without spamming, of course, because then it just turns into that all over again. Yeah, because how many times do you open your email and delete? Like you click delete first before you even go to the most important, yeah. you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I think you have to look at like format, like what's actually what you're looking at, too, I think is a huge indicator of what's being used. Right. What platforms are, are effective. You want to use what's what's hot, definitely. But you also want to go against the status quo. One of the things to be against the status quo if you're an artist is to go toe to toe and talk to a gallery with a painting under your arm. This is some. This is a big no-no. People are like, oh, no, 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 you can't do that. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. You can go talk to someone and say something as simple as, look, this is my name. This is who I am. This is my artwork. Simple, a fast, quick pitch. Don't waste their time. And tell them what your assets are. Maybe you have 10,000 fans on your Facebook page. That's an asset, you know? Uh, and then you have a product. You can say, you know what? Let me leave this here. Let me leave this here. Mm -hmm. See if you can sell it in a week. Yeah. No strings attached. No strings See if you can sell it. And if, then, you can, if you can sell it, we'll, we'll, we'll split it and down then, the middle. Yeah, yeah. And then, well, yeah, most galleries have that. But, but then you can be like, we'll, we'll leave it here. And then, and then, uh, I'll see send if you can people sell your way. You, you don't even have to tell them that. Yeah. Go and do every effort to send people to that gallery. Yeah. And tell them, oh, so and so told me their work was here. You know, and they're going to love that. Little things, you know, they're little subtle things. Galleries are hit or miss. They are. Some galleries will tell you, I'm, you're going to be a featured artist. You can't sell anywhere else. And you want to be featured in different places. You want to be able to sell. Um, thank you so much, Mark. Mark says the work is so authentic. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, you paint hours and hours. Uh, Anthony says, Anthony Car uh, Carvajal says, I've really tried to focus only on line. So have I. I've, I focus a lot on line, but but this is one of the things that I keep going back, even with myself when I talk when I talk to you guys, is look, dude, I'm talking to myself, right? There is brick and mortar. It's not going anywhere. And online, we're barely scratching the surface. You know, there's so much happening in brick and mortar that because, see, what we think about going online, what's what's going on? We think about going online, we automatically think it's going to be easier. And it's not easier. It's just that the, it's just that the pool is so big and the reach is so it's, it's faster, but it's not easier. It's not it moves easier. faster. Right. The, and the reach. That's the interesting thing about online is that it moves faster and forgets you faster. So you have to you have to constantly be keeping things fresh because memories are short online. I mean, yeah. look at us on Facebook, how quickly we're talking about things. And then that hot topic goes away. Right. And so you have to constantly keep things fresh. You have to constantly. It's a retail window. Um, you know, yeah. Um, you have to constantly be producing and creating work so that it's fresh for the eyes that are looking at it because right. we are so easily distracted right. in on the internet. On right. uh, brick and mortar, I feel has it's it's has to keep up, but I feel like it's not as a rapid as um, co-ops. Yeah, you you know what? This is the thing. This is the thing. Uh, Anthony Carvajal says, what about co-ops? Uh, what I don't like about the traditional galleries and such is that they judge. Yeah, approve your work. Yeah, you're, you're going not? into the slaughterhouse sometimes. I think that sometimes you have to remind criticism. the gallery that they're a store. Yeah. 
the last time we had to go talk to a gallery, that's what we were. No, you are a store. You are another space for us to sell. They try to if encapsulate you many if you, times. If you want to work together, we can collaborate. We can work together. But they really, I mean, they are a store looking for product that they need to sell. Yeah. And many, and, and many times they behave. I'm sorry to cut you in, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something really important here. Many times they try to encapsulate you and say, if you're going to show here, you can't show here, 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 or there. That doesn't work for you. No. Unless they have like, unless they have like, you know, a thousand galleries all over the world. Yeah. Then yeah, sure. I mean, go ahead. Take take care of that. Yeah. You know, but if they only show one gal, if they only have one gallery, you know, or two galleries, I don't know, and their stuff is not moving fast, and even if you sell your work at two, three thousand bucks, if your stuff is not moving fast, you're not gonna make it. It's not gonna cut. And I know it sounds, you know, but if you if you sell something for two thousand bucks in a gallery that 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 doesn't allow you to go sell somewhere else, by the end of the day, you made a thousand bucks. At the end of the day, most people will be like, oh, that's great. Yeah, but you need 10 of those, you know, in order to keep something moving. I personally think I, I, and the reason why I mentioned the gallery thing was because a lot of people that listen to us want to know about galleries. We focus mostly online. I understand why a lot of people are against the gallery system. I totally understand it because it <laughs> needs to be, uh, it needs Henry. to be. It needs to change a little bit. I think they're still operating from an old sales process that probably doesn't function in this modern one. But um, I think it's okay to have options. Yeah. I think it's okay to be seen. You want to be seen in as many places as possible. Yeah. Is the bottom line. Yeah. I wouldn't. So I wouldn't, if an opportunity comes your way and it's a gallery, yeah, why I not? Would, don't this. I, see, this is a thing. I, again, I, I, I've, I've seen some of the stuff that Anne talks about. I think she's a smart woman. Uh, nothing negative to say. Yeah, we have heard of her. But here's the thing. I wouldn't just, I wouldn't think, you know, just be one, go one route or, or leave one route out. No, like I wouldn't leave anything out. If you have a big following in your church, mm -hmm. try to get them to make a, 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 an art exhibit in your church. Yeah. Like don't leave anything out because when you're starting out, it's, it's like you're a little vampire. You need blood. You need blood. And it comes from different places. And you got to find those veins. You know, once you find that vein, like, it doesn't matter if it's, if, if they don't speak your language, if they don't uh, carry, let's say it's a, it's a place that only sells sculptures or only sells pottery and they have your paintings there, you know, you might be there. Why not? You're adding to the product mix. And now you're the gem of the place. Yeah. You know, yeah. now you're not lost in the shuffle. Yeah. This is one of there, the... There are so many different ways to create sales. There are people that we've met. We have a huge festival that comes through Tucson every year. It's the 4th Avenue Street Fair. And they come in the fall and in the spring, mm -hmm. right? It comes twice a year. Mm -hmm. There are people that we... Other artists that we've spoken to that all they do is travel around the, travel around the country doing different fairs. Right. And that's their bread and butter. They travel. They do these fairs. These fairs draw millions of people to them right. in a span of... Because they're there for a week, right? Or like four or five days. You, you want to be open to every and, single avenue. And, and every so single they, they, they do. They travel everywhere. And granted, now you're talking about their expense now maybe isn't what, you, what we pay what I call as rent to eBay, right? right. Yeah, because we're paying a marketplace to show our work. Mm -hmm. They're paying. They're paying a marketplace to share their work, and now their expense is the travel, right. the traveling, the fair circuit. Right. But they they make their living that way, yeah, selling their product. Because the reality is, is it doesn't matter where, as long as you have a lot of eyes to look at it and pocketbooks that are willing to be open to sell it. So I think that. Sometimes we limit ourselves right. to only discussing art either in gallery or online or, right. you know, um, different formats for how you want to sell your work. Yeah. You, 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 and, and I'm not talking about some guerrilla marketing. I'm not talking about that because I know that that's very popular, like the whole guerrilla marketing. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't go after necessarily that because to me, when I hear that from based on what I've learned and artists that I've talked to, it's a very homemade approach. Like, yeah. you know, like, like, like those videos that come out on, on TV, on, not on TV, on, 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 uh, on the phones, that it's like, oh, your, your pillowcase doesn't work anymore. Here, cut it. And then this and then that. And then make it an apron. You know? Right. I feel like a lot of the guerrilla marketing is like that. Am I making any sense? I think so. 
Kind of like, kind of like over making something, like throw away the pillow case, the pillow sleeve, it doesn't work anymore. Go buy a new one as opposed to like repurposing it. And okay. You're lost, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. A lot of the guerrilla marketing is more complicated than what it needs to be. That's why I'm not about the guerrilla marketing. For example, a lot of the guerrilla marketing is like, oh, pass out flyers and blah, blah. Or, or it, 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 it it turns into like figuring something smart, you know? Right. Like trying to be clever. Right. You don't need to be clever right now. You need to be raw. You, it, it needs to be raw. It doesn't need to be clever. You don't have to come up with a... With oh, a, with a, I see what you're talking a about. clever approach because most artists try to do that that I talk to. They try right. to come up with a clever approach. Got it. You know what I mean? Right. Like how can I create a pop-up? Dude, don't go try to create a pop-up. Go find someone who already has a pop-up and join in. You know, like, like right. you know what I mean? Right, like, right, like right. make it easy right. so that you can just go in. Uh, someone asked me also about, about talking more about pricing uh, process. Uh, I will be talking about that. That's a whole, I think that's a whole set of videos. <laughs> but just to, just to touch on it really quick here, guys. Look, when it comes to pricing, you want to have different prices. Walking to a, walking to a, a, a grocery store. I know this is, again, this is against the status quo. Uh, if you go to a grocery store, you will see prices from, I don't know, uh, Snickers, you know, Snickers candy bars, all the way to couches mm -hmm. or whatever they have, uh, uh, patio, you know. Patio furniture. Patio furniture. You want to be able to do the same thing. You want to be able to have as much pricing because you don't know who's purchasing from you. Mm -hmm. So till you test that out. One of the very first mistakes I made was that I started going really high or really low. Mm -hmm. Only. Mm -hmm. You don't want to do that. You don't want to. You don't want to have only. If you want to go low and you know something sells low and you know you can make your your, maybe you can't make money out of it, but maybe you drive traffic, then do that. Right. But but also have higher price points. Mm -hmm. You know. So you it, it's a it's a testing thing. So you want to be able to have it, everything it is you a can. Testing thing. It's a testing thing. Yeah, it is. But again, like the same thing with the avenues. You want to have as many avenues as possible. Right. When you're starting out, you don't know what's happening. So you want to be able to you push want to as cover much your costs and push as many buttons as mm -hmm. possible. Exactly. Now it doesn't take money to make money, guys. A lot of people say that kind of stuff. Like I don't have money, so how can I get started? And and on and on and on. It takes effort. It's going to come down to your hustle muscle, how fast you can move, how hard you can move, how many people you can reach. Uh, I'm sorry, guys. I'm trying to keep up with uh, the conversation. <laughs> um, well, the thing is, is that you want to have, you, you want to be able to have different price points, price points that would, would attract, let's say, a buyer who maybe isn't willing to spend that much on your artwork to start with. We have a lot of buyers that will test. Yes, on the same channel. That, that, that won't spend that much for, at first. They'll buy two or three paintings over the year. Maybe they buy five. And then at the end of it, we, we actually just had a collector who had been buying for us from, for years and bought at great prices, but, you know, now is like, I'm ready. I'm ready to commission work from yeah. you. Large work, you and, know, and substantial I'm ready, prices. I'm, I'm ready to commission. I've, I've gotten, I, I feel comfortable with you now. There are the $100 I've been loop. working. I've been working and buying your work from you. And, and it looks great in my office. And I get a lot of compliments. And now I'm ready for the big pieces. Yeah. So w work with me. And I think that that's, um, I think that that's about building relationships and trust when you start yeah. when you start creating those like higher priced sales because at first as a starting out artist i think people are trying to figure out whether you're worth the investment yeah they have to like you right I, not not always of course because there's those those moments but for the most part when i sell a higher price point like a 5000 6000 whatever dollar painting the, the people that are purchasing from me 9 out of 10 they like already. They like us. They have a relationship with us. They know what we're about, and and they're ready for that. Mm -hmm. And in most cases, they bought a few hundred dollar items mm -hmm. before they got to that. Mm -hmm. In most cases, huh? Yeah, it's been very rare when they when they just purchase something at a higher price right. point. Right, right. It takes time. Yeah, because mm -hmm. they they're trying to they're trying to see when when someone's trying to collect an artist, they're trying to make a connection themselves too. They're they're making a connection through your work. Maybe maybe they're not ready for the investment from from the get go. So one of the things that artists do, which I 
I am completely against is you either create original artwork and you set it at, I don't know, $10,000 price point or whatever. You know, somewhere where most people can't reach their wallet and say, let me have it right now. Right. Mm -hmm. And then they'll do like, oh, OK, well, you can't afford it. Here's a twenty five dollar print, you know. Right. And then everything is blank in the middle. Right. That is a that is a a thing that is, I believe is hurting most artists right now. Anthony, we've done videos too. I think that might be helpful for you about um, where we've talked about creating different opportunities for yourself in different avenues to sell, especially if you're on a, if you're just starting and you don't have money to invest in getting your name out there, getting yourself out there. Yeah, you don't need money. Um, there's there's all kinds of social media. Yeah, there's and all, all kinds, kinds of, of ways to create. Yeah, um, you're gonna need you're gonna need opportunities to sell effort and time. Um, and I think, That's true. and I think too, I think people forget that you have to create different price points because a lot of times you can add on. It's not right. even just it's not even just they sell they buy one or the other. They buy cheap or buy expensive. <laughs> Uh, sometimes it's that they might buy the expensive piece and then three little pieces because they want to create a collection of your work in their home. And so they're at, they, they want to be able, you got to look at yourself as an artist, but also as, as, as someone who's selling a product. Right. And so you want to have enough product to sell at different, at different price points so that they'll want to buy from you. Right. Multiple times, over and over again. Want to buy gifts for people? Want to buy that? That's another way to get your name out. Is if someone's like, "I'm buying a bunch of gifts." We actually had someone uh, buy a bunch of artwork from us because they were going to give it out as Christmas gifts. They just loved the, your work so much that they were like, "I want to give this out to everyone," and they felt right. like they could afford to buy multiple pieces, and they right. they felt like, "Oh, I can do this. I can buy." five pieces and give them away so, to, so i think um do you want to make sure that you're just creating opportunity bolt the, this is bold he yeah, wants bold. to he wants to play he's God. a baby so um <laughs> so yeah guys uh whatever you do if you look at an artist doing something <laughs> my recommendation my recommendation is Go the opposite way as hard and as fast as you can. <laughs> Just joking. Because they might be doing something right. Well, then but, they're going to they're gonna click off right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> they may be doing something right. So, but yeah, guys, you, you want to go against the, the status quo. You, you want to not go do the same mistakes most people are doing. Uh, or work so Some different. of them are offered with frames. Some of them are not. Yeah. You want to have different things happening, different sizes, different different prices, different, you know, even different media. You know, maybe mm -hmm. you like photography, you know, and you talk to people who, who like photography mm -hmm. and and they're like, oh, yeah, I like photography, but I've never seen this painting. Oh, let me see this painting. Yeah. See, because what you want to create is the opportunity. Yeah. And this is the hardest thing to, to, to grasp because we're very singular. See, it, 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 yeah, you mix it up. want to mix it up. If if you were a musician, you can't just play ballads, you know. You can't just play ballads, and you can't just show up in the same venues. You maybe you want to go to a country venue, you know. Yeah. Well, and I think people forget that. Like I, we used to get scolded a lot by family. Um, why are you selling online? Oh, you're an artist. You're supposed to do A, B, and C. You gotta be expensive. And I would always use the example of, let's say Rihanna, uh, whatever. I can't think of, or whatever other pop star. They sell, maybe, you can buy their single online, iTunes, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe you can download the single and you pay a certain amount. Right. And so, or they get royalties. They, they're getting their money from so many small, what looks like, drips. like little drips of money. You want to get drips. But they're getting it multiple times over and over again. That's the only example I can share with you guys in that right. that I think makes the most sense is that, is that they're create they're getting little bits of money 
over and over again so that you can get the CD at the Walmart or the Target and mm -hmm. then you can download it on iTunes and then you can get it on AB and, and C then she does and then they're going to sell their DVD and then you can go see the concert. Like there are so She'll show many up to ways. A, to a club and get right. paid for it just showing up. There are so many different ways in which they are marketing and promoting what it is that they're doing and they're getting money from all of those spaces. So right. that's how you want to look at what you're doing right. is that how do I create enough ways to see me and how can and in those ways that you're seeing me how do I sell to you and when it's not just about traffic guys I know that because it, it, it is just about traffic uh, to a certain degree if if you have a lot of traffic then it makes sense that it's just traffic. but most of us don't have that luxury most of us don't have 3,000 300,000 followers on Instagram right. or half a million YouTube yeah. subscribers most of us don't do, don't have that so unless we have that then it makes sense that it's traffic you want to be able to have all the ingredients playing in there you want to be able to have traffic but also the right offer and also the right artwork and also you know whatever that finding is finding the right things takes you have to dial it, in you have to it it honestly just means like experimenting experiment to see, you have to what, dial in. see what works and it's not going to work every single time that's why i tell you you have to keep it fresh because it's not um going to at some point like i was telling you online people get so easily distracted yeah. that if it looks the same over and over again they're gonna not look at it again right um you know i was telling my husband there's a makeup company that i i was buying from like non-stop and they they're they sold online and once the color started looking the same like every Thanks, season i was like oh Okay, I'm going to go look at something else. Because we are so easily, like, we want different all right. the time. Like, he and I joke around. It's like dating, right? Like, when you're dating, yeah. you want you want to date. You Like, if you're, let's just say you're not looking for commitment or whatever. You for just, a relationship. You're looking, you're you're looking like, for the hey. different. You're like, oh, I want to see what dating this person's like. And I want to see what dating this person's like. And so we always talk about how selling online is like dating. How, like, we have to show up differently every single time to be like, I'm going to attract you today. You're going to be attracted to me. So I got to be, this is what I'm going to be today to attract you in my way, you know? Right. Um, yay, Mark. I'm glad we were helpful because I was worried that maybe we were not being helpful. Saying by that. Posting different work often. Yes. And and in, and it may be in different venues, and it mm -hmm. may be to different people, and it may be see that's why you have to dial in. It may be also a, a, at different times of the day, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Different tactics, exactly. Yeah. You don't want to. Like, you don't want to stick to the same tactic. If a tactic works, don't move though. <laughs> well, you want to keep it in an ad to your arsenal of sales. This is right? one of the mistakes that a lot of us do. That something starts to work, and we're like, oh, I wonder what this other thing will do. But each format is different. Like if you're just talking about like the major online formats, you're what you got Amazon, right. Etsy, and eBay. Each one r works differently and attracts a different type of buyer. So you always have to take all that into account. I, I believe in, a, in attracting, so. uh, Anthony says, what about uh, targeting your audience or marketing? This is a very cool uh, thing, a very cool idea. It, it was very prevalent, especially in the early 2000s. The target market, again, it's very vertical. You want to do that because, because yes, that's important. But you don't just you don't just want to focus on a target market. You want to go horizontal, guys. You want to go talk to your neighbor. You want to go broad. You want to go broad. You want to go talk to people who maybe have never bought a painting and they're not interested in paintings. They're interested in pottery. Yeah. Go talk to those people too. Yeah. Because you want to. But at the same time, see, there's multiple levers you have to keep moving. At the same time, be vertical. Now the question is that comes after this is well, why do I? Why would I have to do that? Why don't I just focus? On a high price point on a very vertical market. The reason why, the reason why I, I, I go against this, and it's not only because I've learned it from a mentor, uh, uh, but also if you just go on a vertical and just apply everything on a vertical, sooner or later, everything, a straight line, sooner or later, will decline. Whether the market shifts, the, the things change, uh, people may not people may not necessarily purchase at that in that place anymore. People may not follow the same uh, artwork. People change. Like today, well, you're watching the Game of Thrones. Tomorrow, you're not. Well, and another thing too, and uh, uh, this is to answer that question. Another thing too is that you may not really understand your buyer. Right. You may have That's an idea of who your buyer is, and that might not be your buyer. For a long time, he and I thought that our buyers were. Uh, 
older upper middle class, right? Yeah. We found out that it was actually like young uh, 30s, uh, what, what, like 30 to 50 working and looking for, enjoyed art, felt they couldn't afford art. Right. And were really excited that they were finding... Um, Let's pick up me. Yeah, finding uh, that they found an artist that they could purchase and purchase multiple pieces from to decorate their homes. Like here we are thinking about artwork as this very fancy thing. And, and they were just really, they wanted a, a practical, I want to decorate my home and I want original art. And have, yeah. and you've just created, you've given me the opportunity to have original art decorated in my home. And so um, I think that a 